Hi, I'm Bob Alsop with Shop Saver CNC. Around here, they call me Router Bob. In this video, we're going to produce a chessboard out of solid lumber, and we're going to be using an inlay technique from VCar Pro. Let's get started. Our plan for this project is to start with solid glued up panels. The main board will actually be walnut and then the contrasting squares will be maple. So it's going to involve solid wood panels and a little bit of fixturing. This project is hardwood lumber, so let's talk about that. When you go to the lumber store, the lumber supplier, you'll hear some terms like four quarter, five quarter, six quarter, 12 quarter, whatever. Well, that means thickness. It means rough thickness. So four quarter is one inch lumber. So that one inch means it comes out of the sawmill and it's thick, it's gonna be rough on the surface because the teeth on the sawmill are big. In the drying process, all of a sudden it's where the warpage comes in. So you may have cupping, it may be twisted. So before we can use it, we basically have to straighten it out. And so here's the process. You start out by facing, and facing is, means you create a flat plane on one of the sides. Right. And then, so that's created. Then we plane that to thickness, so we produce a surface parallel to it. So we get in that process, our, our board straight, it's uniform thickness. Then we do the same thing on the edge. We run a straight edge, that would typically be on a joiner, and then we produce an edge parallel to it, which would be ripping on the table saw, typically. And finally, we square it end off and cut to length. And that process goes regardless of what the part you use for. You have to straighten it out first. Now let's go back to this concept of thickness, all right? So four quarter means the rough thickness is one inch. Now I might say, uh, I'd like for you to plane this. So instead of me having to do the facing and the planing, I might just say, I wanna buy it as 2 s surfaced on two sides. All right, if I don't specify the thickness, it's gonna be 13 16 because that's dictated by the National Hardwood Lumber Association. Now, sometimes suppliers will take it on down to 25, 30 seconds. I also have the option of specifying what thickness I want it set at. And so typically what I might do is I might say, I want it S2S 7 8 and hit or miss. Now hit or miss means there can be an area that didn't smooth out. And here's why we do that. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take this four quarter lumber, let's say, and we're gonna glue it together to make a panel. So here's what I do. I plane it down to uh, 7 8 cut the edges so I get my joints, then those boards go together to form a wider panel. So now I got this glued up panel, all right? Then once I plane it, once I face the surface and plane it to thickness, I can end up with my target thickness at three quarters of an inch. So that's why the seven eighths hit or miss is a really good way to go. Now let's talk about our process. I needed two panels that were glued up and I wanted the, the board finished thickness to be one inch, so I started with a five quarter stock, hit and miss, S2S. So, so that's what I glued together. Now, here's the thing you run into when you're gluing. You gotta be really careful and get it level because if you're off a 16th, it takes a 16th to flatten that out and the same amount on the other side. So it's real easy to run undersized. So you gotta be really careful. So we glued those panels together. And then the next step was to take it over to the router and actually use the router to hold it down so that we could surface it because we don't have a planer. And, and I created a little gasketed fixture to hold that because uh, normally uh, just flow through with the MDF spool but it won't hold a panel like that. So that's the process we used. Let's talk about our procedure so far. Now we're looking at the machine control and the first program we run is actually uh, this one that does the fly cut that we looked at. And if I view that, there it is. Okay, so. So when I execute that, then, then that cuts that pocket basic your uh, fly cut program. All right, now, the depth was zero, so if I run it again, nothing happens. So some, I've either got to go in and edit the program, or I've got to change the Z0. So why don't we do this? Right now, Z0 is setting at, uh, at zero, so it's at that plane. Now, jog the machine over in some area where it's not gonna hit anything, all right? so that it's a clear area, jog the machine over, type in Z0, and that'll bring the tool to Z0. Now I want you to do this on the line up here. I want you to type in the following G code. All right, G92, 
then z, which means z-axis, and I'm going to say instead of it z0, it's actually at point zero 0.03. And I'm going to hit enter, and watch over here now, you see it says point zero 0.03. So I, in effect, I shifted the z0 plane down 30,000. So now when I run my program, it takes 30,000 off. The key to that is that number that I type in, that point 0.3, uh, that can be any number, but that determines how much I take off in that pass. So maybe I only want to take off 10,000. Maybe I want to take off 15. That's how you do that, and that's using the G92. But be very, very careful when you do that, that, that you don't have a typo. All right, now let's go back to the software and see where we go. Once we've created that first flat surface, we can normally hold the panel with flow through. So what we would typically do then is machine the other surface to thickness, and then we do our actual machining for the board, and that involves doing a pocketing on one side and then creating the plugs on the other. Then that gets glued together, and then we machine what we don't need of the maple. Since this project is making a chessboard, let's take a look at the anatomy of a chessboard. What you see on the screen is VCAR Pro. You see a series of squares, and they're, they're eight by eight, and of course they alternate colors. Now, the actual square size can be a range. It can be anywhere from two to two and a quarter, and probably you could have other sizes. Sometimes it's based on the size of chess pieces. When they play tournaments, the size of the squares are always two and a quarter inches, so that's why I selected that size. So when you put all these together, it's basically uh, 18 by 18. So that's what we start with. So in our case, we're going to have an underlying color of the board itself, that's this, which is walnut, and then we're going to pocket out these squares and we're going to inlay maple in there. So that gives us our, pool, our table, and then we're actually gonna put a little vein boundary around that. So that's really how we got started with this. And so now we've gotta figure out, okay, where do I go from there? How do I set this up on the machine? Now, first off, we're gonna start with solid glued up panels that haven't been planed. So I need a way to hold them in place with vacuum in order to, to fly cut them. And so I'm gonna use a gasketed fixture. And, and that fixture can be used for virtually everything we do on this. So let's figure out how that's laid out. This is gonna be a fixture board, and I believe it's 30 by 48. And that's gonna go on the front zone of our machine so we can put all the vacuum on that front zone. And then it's gonna get vacuum uh, from the table. So that's how things are gonna be held. So what's gonna happen is this fixture board, when we set it up on the machine, we're actually gonna put this against the part locator pins. So there'll be a pin over here and a couple down here, and that'll give us repeatability. So if we take that fixture board off and put it back on, it'll be in roughly in the same place. All right, and then we're gonna basically put this board in the center of the fixture board itself. So that's how we got started. Now we've got some other things that we're going to need also. We're gonna need a way to handle vacuum. And there's really two boards here. One, there's a walnut board and then there's a maple board. And the walnut board is this one. And the maple board is what we use to make what I call the plugs, the pieces that fit down in here. So it's smaller. So I really wanna make sure I have a vacuum system that will hold that smallest one because it'll also hold the largest one. So it makes things simpler to do it that way. Let's look at a couple of the pieces of geometry here. All right, there's a gasket. Let's turn the gasket on. Now here's what that means. Underneath, you're gonna have a gasket, so there's gonna be a groove in the, in the fixture board itself, a quarter inch wide, 3 16 deep, and we're gonna put black gasket in there. And the gasket sticks up about a 16th. Then on the inside of that, we have a vacuum groove, and that's what this is. So that vacuum groove is a quarter inch deep, and then it actually ties through it, we drill through the fixture board itself so the vacuum gets access from under the table, and that's what feeds this groove. So you have vacuum coming in here, and then you have a gasket to seal the perimeter. And then when you put your panel on there, that'll hold it in place. And we also have some part locator pins that we're gonna employ because we have machining on both sides of a part, so we need a way to locate that. And I believe that's these pins right here. So you got a pin here and here. And that allows us to take a piece off, turn it upside down, and have it indexed correctly so the front side and the back side line up. So those are the kinds of things that are involved here. So the first thing we would probably do then is, is to machine this fixture board and get that set up. Process-wise, we're going to have to uh, figure out a way to fly cut the glued up panels. 
and it, it turned out that uh, normally, if they're not off too bad, where the gasket is pullable, it'll hold it in place. Then you can fly cut them, and once you have a flat surface, uh, then you flip it over and you and you and you fly cut the other side, and you arrive at, at the final thickness. Sometimes when you fly cut a panel, you can actually hold it with flow through fi fixturing, but you can't always guarantee that if you wait a day or two, if it warps a little bit, you can't hold it. All right, now let's look at some more tool pathing. One of the things that I did when I made the fixture board was actually cut a shallow groove in there to tell me where the, the blank went. And, and basically this kind of represents that area because what we're gonna do first is we're gonna take our blank and hopefully it's gonna be held with vacuum. And let's just, in our case, it worked quite well. All right, so then our first step is to, is to surface that board. Well, how are we gonna do that? We're, we're going to create a pocketing or a, it's actually we're gonna create a fly cut program. Let's, let's take a look at it. Here's what it's gonna look like. And if I hit that, so what's gonna happen is that's gonna cut, it's a pocket just like you were doing a fly cut for a spoil board, all right? So basically we're using an inch and a half cutter you could go larger if you wanted to, and we're just creating a flat program. But let me, there's a, some idiosyncrasies about it I want to show you. If I open that up, you notice my depth of cut zero. So it doesn't take any off. Now, the reason I did that is because basically I want to bring the tool down and touch it off to the top of the surface and run it the first time. And what that does is that identifies the high spots and the low spots. So you'll notice, all right, there's high spots and low spots. Now. Next, I, I need to decide how much do I want to take off. So here's what I'm doing. I'm looking at the panel to see how clear it is. And what I'm trying to do is get um, the sm a smooth panel at the highest thickness possible. So I, I want to take off as little as possible. And I'm going to show you a technique to achieve that at the machine control. So I can take this program and use it over and over. All right, now, so let's assume that we've, we've ran it, we've, we've flattened it. Uh, we've done that multiple times until there are no defects. Then we flip it over and we do the same thing. And now we want to arrive at a, at a thickness. And typically this board was going to be an inch thick finish. So when I got finished the uh, surface on the other side, the thickness is about a 30 second over. So I've got a little bit of room to level things out because my target is to finish that out at, uh, at one inch. And then I did the same procedure on the maple board once again, just uh, just to get it smooth on both sides. And finally, while I had the walnut board, once I decided which side was gonna be the, the, the downside, then I went in and I actually machined some pinholes in there so that that would index it. But I, I waited until I had both sides machined before I determined which one was the best by looking at the grain. Because now we're ready to start making these uh, inlays. So let's start out with the walnut piece first. Now what you see here are squares and they're just individual squares. They're spaced out. So what we have to do is actually uh, do a 3D uh, inlay of that, or V-carve, and it needs to be a quarter inch deep. So there's actually two tools involved. One is a straight tool. That's a straight quarter inch bit, and the other is a V-bit. And when you get finished, you actually have uh, the V-shape. In fact, we should be able to actually look at those. So when we finish those, preview selected, and then we'll do that. That's what the surface is going to look like. All right. And now that's all we really have to do on, on the walnut panel at this stage. The next thing we're going to do is actually uh, make the same pan make the same cut except mirrored in uh, in maple. So let's take a look at that. We took the original drawing, and because the plug is flipped we have to mirror it. So now this shape in here was mirrored. Now if all I do is cut that, let's open this up, all right, and we'll simulate, run a simulation on it. So we cut that first, and then we do the bead carving. You see, that's what we get. But that's what we had on the other side. We need something else, and that's why when you see on this drawing, I add another piece of geometry into the selection and we hit calculate. Now we'll reset that, we'll turn these off. So now the first thing that happens is the straight bit, the quarter inch bit, it produces that. So now these, instead of being pockets, they actually are extending up and when we run the V tool, 
That's what it creates. So then that becomes the pocket, what I call the plug, that fits into the pocket. So all we do is we put glue on those and then take that piece, insert it into the walnut piece, and let the glue dry, and then we're gonna go back to our fly cut program and we're gonna actually machine that maple off to the only thing of the maple that's left is those plugs that are down in the walnut. So that's basically what uh, the inlay process involves. All right, so we basically glued our plug in. We've machined all the maple that sticks up above the walnut. We got one more thing to do, and that is to actually cut the outside of the panel. We're gonna do that with a half inch bit. We're gonna do it in a rough pass and then a finish pass. And the, basically when we do the rough pass, we leave a little extra material that we remove that when we do the finish pass. So let's see what that looks like. Go to 3D. So here's the rough pass. All right, so that roughs it out. Our, our material's still a little bit wide, and so then we do the finish pass. And that gives us a really nice uh, edge finish to minimize sanding. So now we've gone through all the steps that are required to make this. Let's go out on the machine and actually machine the parts. If you're careful in aligning the boards when you glue the panels together, they can usually be held by vacuum if you use a gasketed fixture. If not, you can screw them into a panel to keep it from moving as long as the screws don't extend above the surface. Once you've machined that flat surface, then you'll be able to hold the panels with vacuum. With the zero depth of cut, you should be able to determine the high and low spots. Use the G96 process to remove the low spots. Remember, in this process, we want to maintain as much panel thickness as possible. Turn the walnut panel over and repeat the surfacing operations. Since we want to end at a certain panel thickness, it makes sense to set Z0 as the top of the spool board. This process is done when the surface is both flat and defect free. Now reintroduce the walnut panel to the spool board with the bottom side up, then drill the two alignment pinholes that we'll need later. Place the maple panel on the machine table and surface the top until all the defects are removed. The final thickness is not critical as the excess will be removed in a later operation.
since the maple panel is only machined from one side, it's not necessary to add holes for alignment pins. Now reintroduce the walnut panel back to the spoiler board using the dowel pins for alignment. Run the pocketing program to create the carved pockets in the walnut panel.
Once the glue has dried, the assembly is reintroduced to the machine table. Use the pins for alignment. Gradually remove the excess material until the top surface is complete. The final step is to machine the outside edge of the chessboard. Well, our chessboard project came out really nice. It's amazing what you can do with quality hardwood lumber and a quality shop saver CNC router. I did add one feature that we really didn't cover in the software, and that is I added this vein around here to define these corners. And so you didn't see that on the software. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you'd like to see more videos like this, be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you have any questions, you can contact us at shopsaver.com. Thank you for watching.